Thank you very much for the introduction. And, uh, it's my uh, great pleasure to give a talk in this uh, wonderful conference with a great speaker and the participant. So uh, thank you for inviting. And today I'd I would like to talk about so-called so additive during symptom problem for uh, differential, linear audio differentiation for, uh, with an unramified irregular singularities. And uh, so uh, during symptom during symptom problem itself is a rather simple problem for a linear algebra. So, problem is maybe first considered by Drin and also by Carlos Simpson. And the given data for the the problem is uh, just a collection of uh, conjugacy classes of matrices. Oh, I'm sorry, so conjugacy. And these are just the conjugacy classes of uh, invertible matrices. And the solution of this problem is uh, also just a collection of matrices uh, M. And these components are living in the P, living in these conjugacy classes, which satisfy the following equation. After taking a product, it becomes uh, identity matrices. Ah, I'm sorry, I should <laughs> add a very important uh, condition, so irreducible. So uh, we would like to find some reducible tuple of the matrices which satisfy the following equation. So, and when I, <laughs> I, I'm using the term irreducible is a uh, following meaning. So um, so I call this tuple of matrices is irreducible uh, if and only if the, there is no non-trivial for uh, simultaneous invariant subspace. So I mean, so if there exists some, some vector space W which is preserved by all of the matrices, then there should be a, um, so trivial. Yeah, this is the, Yeah. Huh? I'm sorry? It's not irreducible, it's easier to consider Yeah, yeah, it sounds. Uh, but uh, I'm so I don't think so. So uh, uh um, if it's not irreducible, it is easier to find the solution. Mm, I, I'm not sure, I'm sorry. And so uh, today, I'd like to focus on the, some additive analogy of this problem, maybe first considered by Kostov, so-called additive during simple problem. This may be first considered by Kostov. And so this is a very... Uh, uh, natural, so additive analogy, so given data is also a collection of matrices, collection of conjugacy classes of matrices of it's just a square matrices here. And the solution is Also, a tuple of uh, matrices living in these conjugacy classes, which satisfy the. I'm sorry, so you have to add the irreducible condition. These AIs should satisfy the following additive equation. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is just a trigger bound, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So we ha we have to add some general condition if you get the, if you want to get the Riemann Hilbert problem upside to a lower side. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So um, maybe we can so rephrase this problem as, a, for instance, so this original derivative symptom problem is uh, looking for look for irreducible representation of the monodromy representation on P1 minus several points. In the, and also, the additive analogy can be rephrased as a problem. Look for so it. It is this, in some sense, so it is the function differential equation. The E like this type of differential equation, or so uh, trivial uh, uh, metamorphic so logarithmic connection with uh, the uh, trivial vector bundle. But if if you add some additional genetic condition on AI, we can uh, obtain the Riemann Hilbert correspondence upside and lower side. Okay, so uh, and additive during Simpson problem was uh, solvability. So the solvability of the additive during Simpson problem was uh, completely uh, settled by Kure Bobby by using his theory of representation equilibrium. So today I would like to talk about the generalization of the additive during Simpson problem. So uh, it, uh, uh, we are asking about is there solution of this problem? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, no. Sometimes we, we, we cannot find the solution. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. So uh, he fixed the uh, uh, necessary and the sufficient condition when it is uh, when there is a solution of the transcendental problem. Okay, so uh, I'd like to extend this additive neural symptom problem for non friction differential equation, in particular, so uh, differential equation with unramified irregular singularity. So, okay, so. So, next, I would like to talk about some generalization of additive neural symptom problem for. So differential equation with unlimited regular singularities. Okay. So um, I would like to give a brief uh, review of the square treaty normal form here. So okay. So let us consider the following type of the matrices. Uh, someone called this. Matrix as a quadratic normal form counting. This is a Brock diagonal matrix with a negative polynomial coefficient. It is sometimes called the irregular term or something. T minus T, and also it has a ready to term. Inverse and these Q's are just a polynomial of negative power of T, and these are different if the index is different. And also, residues are just a square matrix matrices of. 
complex question. Um, this particular uh, form of the matrix is sometimes called Hala and treating no more form. Okay, yeah. Yeah. The same one. And the general theory of the local uh, differential local and formal differential equation, we can any local differential equation can be reduced to such kind of uh, differential equation. More precisely, so yes. Whole, yeah. I'm sorry. Hmm? In general, you can have higher problems. Not any. Yeah. 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 Q Q Q is a negative power of the whole. Ah, it's negative. Yeah. 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 Yes. And sometimes this is yeah, this is uh, this theorem is called uh, square treating level theory. And this is a classification theory of the um, local formal differential equation. Uh, for any such kind of uh, formal under local differential equation can be reduced to by some gauge action. Okay. Transformation on to L to some T. Yes. Some so field extension. Yeah, yeah, sure, of course, yes. For 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 any such kind of different equation, there exists some uh, some um, field extension on the Roland power series field. And also, there exist so in this extended field, and we can reduce this equation to the uh, to the form. To the differential equation, whose question term can be written by the quadratic normal form. Okay, so um, in the classical relative during Simpson problem, we considered some uh, as a local um, isomorphic, isomorphic classes, we take an conjugacy classes of matrices, but in our irregular singular case, we will take uh, the orbit of the square normal form as a analogy of the conjugacy classes of classical adjoint Simpson problem. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, the, as I said in the beginning, we just only treat the unramified regular singularity. So uh, we sometimes, so Q is called ramified index of the singularity. So uh, today I will restrict our case just Q is equal to be one case, so so called. I'm wrong side situation. Okay.
Okay, so the next we will uh, construct some orbit of the quadratic normal forms as follows. First, let us define some truncated gauge group. Like this quotient, uh, formal part sheet, it and this it is cut by the higher terms like this. And also, we consider the re a kind of real algebra of GK now square matrices with the quotient field is here. So we take the dual space of this Lie algebra. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will take a dual. I will take. I, now I will take the dual of G. Yes, and the Yuki star is uh, can be regarded as the following space of matrices with coefficients. Um, x minus k yes. by using the trace form. Okay. And this is at polo the minus, polo the k and holomorphic term are ignored. Where? <laughs> ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, yeah, the, the, the XO. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, the next, let us take some unlamified. normal level to normal form, then we can regard this element is in the dual space of real algebra force suitable small k. And I'll take an quadrant orbit of B, then we can construct some kind of orbit of quadratic normal form. But now I'm just focused on the local situation, so unlimited is maybe not uh, nonsense in this case. But I will consider next. I will consider global situation. So we have to assume the unlimitedness. Yes, the orbit is just a quadrant orbit. Yeah. And this is a, a kind of uh, generalization. Conjugacy crosses. In the classical additive domination program case. Okay, so after these preparations, we can state that some kind of generalization of additive domination program for uh, differential equations with unramified Euregia singularity. So uh, 
Alt I'm sorry. Alt Jane Simpson. Program for oh. I'm trying to read your singularities. Uh, given data is a uh, in this case, given data is a collection of square treaty normal forms, unlike five square treaty normal forms. With some pole orders, small case. And the solution is an irreducible, some kind of irreducible differential equations of the following form. Singularities at the finite point, and also it has a singularity at infinity. Consider this type, type of differential equation which satisfying the following local conditions. Namely, yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And sets out the principal terms at each singularity is uh, living in now our prescribed uh, uh, orbit of the quadratic normal forms. And here, A0 is literature term of the infinity is defined by the ordinary residue formula in P1. Um, okay. And here, I, your disability is defined as follows. So, your disability is This irreducibility is a little bit different from the irreducibility of the D module corresponding to this differential equation. In, in, now I use irreducibility in the following sense. This is just the irreducibility of the collection of matrices, which are living in the coefficients of the differential equations. Okay, so this is our generalization of the additive Jimmy Simpson problem. And maybe it may be, it might be seen as a natural generalization of the classical additive Jimmy Simpson problem because if we restrict our polar orders, uh, small ki's are all equal to V1. Oh. 
this is nothing but the Klasker additive density proof problem. Um, Maybe it's uh, so far answer I have no good answer about that. So, okay, so this is our problem. And today we will focus on the explicit form of the solution. It, it, we, we, we do not focus on the explicit form of the solution, but we focus on the existence of the solution of this problem. This is first found by Crowley Bobby in the friction case, and after that, so we both generalized this problem for non friction case. Both. I'm sorry. And after that, so uh, I, uh, I have considered with my colleague Daisuke. And the statement is as follows form. For an additive during symptom problem, we can find some trivial cube. Some trivial cube. So we denote the set of the vertices Q0. And set of arrows Q1. And also we have the dimension vector alpha of this cleaver, and also have a complex parameter. This is a kind of technical point, but there exists some sub lattice of the root lattice of the trigger. The following is happens. L gave to Simpson problem has a solution. So we are asking the existence of the solution. If and only if the following conditions are satisfied. The first condition is this corresponding dimension vector alpha should be a particular element of the root lattice, so-called should be positive root. And also the product of alpha and lambda should be zero. And the next condition, a uh, little bit complicated at first glance, but uh, if there exists, if any decomposition of this alpha, 
satisfying these bases are positive root and also an element in the sublattice L and the product with lambda is zero. If there exists such kind of decomposition of alpha, then the following condition should be satisfied. I will explain the definition of the P right now. This is the second condition. So I, I will, of course, I will explain the definition of P. And here, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alpha should be inside the L. Yes. Okay, so here the P is just a uh, quadratic polynomial of alpha and beta. Okay. And here. So we define the quadratic form Q is defined as follows. So beta. Uh, S and T is a source and the target of our risk of source. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's meaningless. Right. Thank you. And the P is defined by this quadratic form. Oh, yes. <laughs> And the and just all minus q. And roughly speaking, p counting the dimension of the representation space which have the dimension vector alpha. So uh, if we if we have the decomposition of the alpha, so uh, the uh, representation space with alpha should be. Much, should be the most the biggest, the biggest one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Ah, yes. that's the problem. So, uh, yes, this, this is complete. So, and if an, uh, necessary in the sufficient condition, of course, but. Actually, so I <laughs> yes, so uh, so of course uh, the root, root so yeah, but there exists infinitely many roots in the one cleaver, so uh, um, if you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the wild group orbit of the fundamental set of the imaginary root or something. So, uh, so yeah, by using a computer, yeah, of course we can check that. But the fundamental soft set of the imaginary root is also infinite set, so. Um, okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, it can be merging, yes, exactly. So, if we want the exact classification of the solution, existence of solution, we have to uh, classify the fundamental set of the such kind of corresponding quiver and so on. So. so, if you want some. Uh, 
exact condition. So maybe we still have some. We, we still have something to do here. But anyway, so we can uh, we can characterize the existence condition by using the, some kind of language of the root system. Okay, so our, the next task we have to do is the construction of how to construct the Kleber Q from the, our Dream Simpson problem. Yeah, now, now we are talking about the irregular one. Yes, yes, exactly, yes. Yes, that's the crawl of the bobby. Considered friction case and he solved this problem in the friction case and also flip bulge and uh, joint work with Daisuke so we could uh, get same analogous result if the number of irregular single point is less than one and the finally I could find the same situation could be uh, done even it have arbitrary numbers of unramified regular singularities. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Lambda just depend on the uh, lambda is free from the position of the yeah singular points. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yes, just eigenvalues. Yes, coming from yes. Okay, yeah. So no, no, no. Yes, yes. Uh, not really uh, I think it's too open problem in that case. Even in the friction case, I think. So for for uh, the original Dream Simpson problem is uh, still have so many things to do, I think. So it's kind of uh, existence condition for solution is is also open, I think. So already, so Kuroda Bobby has an announcement uh, about solvability of the original Dream Simpson problem, maybe ten years ago, but there are still no uh, full paper or uh, that. It is known in some sense. It can be constructed by using the multiplicative analog of the Kriegel variety. Okay, so uh, let's go to the construction of the Kriegel from our doing symptom problem. And first, let me fix our notation here. So uh, I should take a double of a double of cleaver. We denote it by taking bar. It's just a direct product of representation of cleaver with opposite cleaver representations. Yeah. And also we can denote mu as a moment map from here to alpha C and this is yeah, star comes from the opposite side. And Uh, 
uh, x row means the linear map corresponding to these arrows. And here a is q zero. Yes. Okay. So this is a moment map, and we will take the fiber of the moment map. We're just considering the um, relation on the representation of phases. Consider the fiber space, the orchestra. And also, we restrict our interest into the fiber with the reducible condition. It means that uh, fiber, of, fiber is, of course, the representation. So uh, we just only consider the reducible representations. We can cons we, we can define the table variety like that, like this. This is just a um, quotient space. Mm, no, no, no such, hmm? so, such a condition is not. Necessary, but of course it, the, this space uh, sometimes no, em, sometimes empty set. Yes, 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 yes. Precisely to say it. Oh. Take a quotient by the coordinate exchange at each vertices, and this is called my precessory to say a regular part. Of the variety. So this is a preparation for the notation and how to construct a Kriegel variety from our differential equations. First, we will uh, give a correspondence from the Orbit of the uh, orbit of the Foucault normal form to some to some representation of cubes. So, but for for this correspondence, we need some preparations to. Okay, so let me define the GK node. This is just a subgroup of GK, but the first term is just uh, identity matrices, I identity matrix. GK. And also we define the OB naught is a quadrant orbit of B by the action of G naught. And also, the H is a diagonal matrix. This Ni is coming from the block decomposition of Q1. Uh, 
our of course we can go more forms. Okay. Okay, so by these notations we can decompose the full orbit of the spirituality normal form as a product of G and C and and a little bit smaller orbit or not. But we have to with some additional conditions. This is just an orbit of H action of on on O naught and take a product of H. This is already obtained by the Bolge in his thesis. It's some kind of a knowledge you can be finding his thesis. And first, we will explain the correspondence uh, between our right hand, the second term to the quiver. Okay, first. Let me explain the, how to, the way to construct the quiver from this second part. This is obtained by joint work with Daisuke and also this correspondence already suggested by Philip Roach. The construction is as follows. According to the Brock decomposition of quadrate normal forms, so we put then vertices from one to small r. One, two, small r. And of course, if you want quiver, we have to uh, connect these vertices by arrows. The rule is uh, from i to J, but so the number of arrows is um, the number of arrows from I to J is is defined by the degree of The corresponding irregular terms, the difference of the corresponding irregular terms. Oh yes, yes, yes. And and uh, we will take then double quiver, so uh, it's enough to consider one direction to, uh, uh, yes, to put the arrows. And if otherwise we don't put any arrow here, because uh, we can take a uh, double quiver, so we have we can obtain the, the inverse direction after taking a double. So, like this. And the and after that, how to construct, how to define the dimension vectors 
on each vertices is just looking at the size of matrices of block diagonal components. So uh, we put the positive integers n i to the first vertices and n two is the second vertices and all these are just the size of a block diagonal components. Yes. Here the alpha is n i. Okay, so yes. Infinity. Yeah, yeah. Now, now it's just focus lo local. Yes. Now, now. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. So after that, we'll glue them together. Yeah. Yes. Then we can show the following. There exists following isomorphism from the second term of the decomposition of orbit. So A to X. This A lives in the to alpha satisfying. No. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay. The image of moment map of x plus some uh, additional. This this plays a role of rigidity matrix, but additional a of the diagonal rock component is living in the R was a uh, rigidity term of the fractured moment. So um, yes. on each over each allowed we can put the quotient of here here a i x is sorry this a oh sorry so So uh, this A corresponds to the residue term of the left hand side. And the other questions are put on these arrows, put over on these arrows. Then we can obtain the the root. Yes. Yeah, I, I just got product of Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, over an error, so we put these broke components of these questions. And uh, OK.
Okay, so next we are ready to uh, go to the full orbit. Okay, so we already know the quiver picture of the second term, so we have to consider the contribution of the first term here. So, uh, This is contribution from the second term. And for the first term, we add an additional point at the base point here. here. And also put the vector space G on here. Then we add an arrow from the base point to H block diagonal components. Yes, just one now, yeah. And X row I is a, just a projection of G inverse into these vector spaces. Uh, one, two. How long this decomposition? Okay, then we can show that. Oh, sorry. We can obtain the isomorphism from the full orbit of normal form to the representation. Here Q is a new Q, I'm sorry, and alpha is a new alpha. Add it, it after adding this base point, but I'm using the same notation. I'm sorry for confusing, but okay. So we can construct. Yes. 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 We have to add the inverse arrow too. The contri so uh, the contribution of the additional large A is disappeared in new picture because A living in the inverse arrow of this arrow. So we could erase these uh, additional terms in this new picture. And also we have to add one more open condition because these arrows from the base point to the decomposition spaces should be come from the element of GL. So so after taking that yes, so I'll, yes, after collecting these uh, matrices as a screen matrix, then we have to and uh, open condition of the determinant. And take a portion by H.
and finally we saw the draw a quiver from the residue down to but this construction this construction is rather uh, famous so uh, from the conjugacy class of matrices so you can maybe someone knows so uh, we can construct that type of quiver well, first we uh, take an um, So we choose some complex numbers she to satisfy such kind of uh, equation of matrices. So it is enough to consider the minimal polynomial or divide it by minimal polynomial or something. Then we can draw the type equilibrium by the conjugacy cross of our eyes. Uh, First allo, we just only put the r minus qi one, and the next allo just a product of one and the two, and the next allo product of one and the two and the three, and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay, so that's the all of the preparation to the. Uh, our quiver picture. So uh, finally, after gluing after gluing them together, we can obtain the global picture of the correspondence from the differential equation to the quiver variety. Before going to the quiver picture, so we have to define the modular space of differential equations. So, okay, so MB is just a product of the element in the orbit of Quadratic normal forms, and we are just considering the differential equation on P1. So uh, we impose the residue formula, and also uh, we just don't only focus on the reduced variant. AI, AI new means the uh, quotient matrices at each ice component. I'm going to take a quotient of by the action of the coordinate exchange. So maybe this can be seen as a kind of modular space of differential equation. Then we can rephrase our existence of the solution of our during Simpson problem, it's just a non emptiness of this modular space. Then, by easy consideration, we can identify this space as the following space. A 
H0 means the corresponding H of B0. So, okay. Okay, by using this identification, we write the quiver of MV. So at each point, we already constructed the quivers. So uh, for instance, A0, we can construct from this, this one to the quiver like that, like, like this, A0, 1, A0, 2, A0, A0, and so put them alloys, and for instance, A1, we also have the same type of quivers according to the block decomposition of the quadratic normal forms. But for the second term of the decomposition, it is enough to consider just a uh, point here. But if you want to consider the full orbit, we have to take a contribution from the GL. So in this picture, we regard this A0 as a base. Oh, I already read it. <laughs> In this picture, I will take this A0 as a base point of the previous picture. So we draw now arrows from the A0. Now all vertices on A0 to the A1. For, for instance, so, uh, this is A0 and A1 then. Here and also, yeah, it's uh, it, this corresponds to the block decomposition of the matrices. Like so, for instance, so zero one, two, one, one, and so on. And some other singular point, so one, two, I'm sorry, so R1, two, R, and R. X row, zero, one, two, X row, R1, or something. And finally, we should write the contribution of the residue term. Um, for, for instance, here we have the block component of the residue term R0. So we draw type of quivers at each vertices looking at the conjugacy classes of residue term of a block diagonal component. Okay, so a full picture of the quiver is quite complicated, but anyway, but after this complicated preparation, finally, you can know then. <coughs> the correspondence from uh, between the our modular space of differential equation to the quiver variety 
this is first found by Corey Bobby. And after that, we both extend this. And also, I have a little contribution with my colleague Daisuke. Okay. So then, I'm sorry, I have no time to explain that explicit form of this complex functor lambda, but this is just coming from the, um, oh, I have already, this type of eigenvalue-like complex numbers. It just only depends on this cheese. Depends only on cheese. At the start, we have an isomorphism. from differential equation to the quotient space of the fiber of the moment map. With, with additional condition, unfortunately. I will explain. Yeah, yeah, I, I will explain it, yes. Yes, we have to add some additional condition because, ah, oh, okay, so first I will explain. Because for instance, so we, as, I, as we saw in the previous example, so from the, Base point to the other, the other so singular point. X eyes are just X eyes are should be X eyes should be a projection of the element of GL. So we have to add an open condition on this space or something. So here. This trend space is of course it's subspace of the fiber, but we have to import First, we have to imply the, this type of open condition from the contribution of the GL and, and also we have to take care the. Okay, so uh, here, if we write alpha two one. If we, if we write the dimension vector corresponding to zero one is alpha zero one, then alpha zero one plus alpha zero two plus alpha zero. So these alpha zero something was a uh, size of the block of the quadratic normal forms of the differential equation. So the summation of these size of a block should be equal to the length of the E we are considering. So this means that at any singular point, The, if you take the summation, then the all the sums should be the same at each finger point, because we have to import this kind of GL, GL conditions. So the irreducibility is should be changed in my picture. So X is just irreducible. Not it, yeah, X is not.
or we impose some weaker condition of the irreducibility. I, of course, I explain here. Yep. OK, sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is complex. Sure, 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 sure. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I. No, no, but if, if I'm not interested in the reducible, for instance, just to explain it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, okay, so I will explain the uh, meaning of L here. So. Okay, so L was a sub lattice, but now we can now we can give you the precise definition of L is the element of full root lattice, but it should satisfy this condition. The summation at each single point should be the same. the definition of uh, because we are uh, interested only on the representation coming from the differential equations uh, if the representation comes from a differential equation this condition should be satisfied because of this situation so we restrict our interest in this sub lattice Yeah, 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 but so it's not so important in this situation. So of course, we are, oh, okay, of course it's, it's very important to, uh, to, for, to determine the existence or non-emptiness of this modulus. But now we are just talking about uh, yeah, correspondence. So of course this space is sometimes empty and sometimes not empty, but we are, so yeah, so far we have nothing to say in this kind of you know, emptiness here. Yeah, and the irreducibility is just a condition like this. So if X has sub-representation with dimension vector is living in L, then this Y should be trivial. This is our irreducibility coming from the irreducibility of the differential equation. Just only have ten minutes, but yeah. um, may, maybe yes, but I have no yeah good answer for it. Yeah. Okay, I don't need this picture. Okay, so here we need some remarks. Of course, by these strange conditions, this our modular space are not inside the quiver variety in general. Because I did. 
because L, 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 irreducibility is weaker than usual irreducibility. Of course, the uh, converse direction is true. So, but but in the case of the number of regular singularity is less than one, then we can after taking some trick, we can construct the. After taking some trick, we can construct the isomorphism, our modular space into the ordinary uh, quiver variety. So in this case, the story is very happy because uh, because necessary and sufficient condition for the non-emptiness of the regular part of quick variety is already known. By Corey Bobby. So by using this uh, necessary and sufficient condition of the non-emptiness of quick variety, then we can obtain them. No emptiness, of course, no emptiness or existence of the solution of quiver, uh, no, the additive during symptom problem. That is a story, a classical story of the glory body and the bulge and the joint work with the so, okay, in the case of the number of UVR singularity is less than one or equal to one. But in our situation, so <laughs> we can't obtain this type of isomorphism into the quiver variety, so we have to do something more, but I just only have maybe five minutes or three, more, so I'd... maybe I just can explain some very, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, but very, so uh, very rough uh, outline how to uh, resolve this difficulty in our situation. So, unfortunately, you cannot apply the uh, classical strategy to show the non-emptiness directly. But, But, but we are lucky because uh, we can uh, get the open embedding into some other complex parameter around the prime. Because uh, because we impose some strange conditions on the fiber space. But it's strange, but it works very well in our situation because uh, we have the parameter shift of the fiber space if we restrict our space into the, our open subset. Of course, it is difficult to find the parameter shift the whole space of the quiver variety, but we are just, we are, consider, we are living in the restricted space. We can construct such kind of very useful uh, parameter shift, for instance. This is very rough definition, but Parameter shift can be constructed 
at follows. Try x prime low i. Oops. Right, because uh, a zero, a one, a r, x row one and x row r, because connected to, connecting r from a zero to the other um, singular point, the linear map should be inside the dual element. So we can define this inverse because rho, x row i's are living in the dual. So we can construct such kind of parameter shift operator from the left hand side to some other parameter on the prime. And, and by using this useful parameter shift, we can show the following technical lemma. So we can choose the parameter shift to the prime so that following good condition is satisfied. For any root vector alpha prime, it is smaller than uh, original alpha. And the product is uh, lambda prime is equal to zero. Then we can show this alpha prime should be inside our L. We can always choose such kind of very useful lambda prime by using this uh, parameter shift. So namely, this means that any sub-representation of x should satisfy the dimension vectors uh, living in L. So in this situation, Irreducibility is equivalent to the usual irreducibility. So, after taking such kind of point shift, then yeah. we are not happy because of, because. We are not so happy in this step, but oh, my time is over. I'm sorry. In this step, but we have the parameter shift. Then, after taking the parameter shift, this is inside the usual quiver variety. So we can get the open embedding into the usual Kruger variety of the modular space of differential equations. So as a corollary of this fact, we can show the geometric property of this modular space because this is very good. This enjoys very rich geometric structure. For instance, it is so connected uh, complex manifold with simple structure. But 
Okay, so what we can show, by, by using this theorem, we can show some kind of geometric property of this module space, space, but we still have to show the normal emptiness, but my time is over, so I, I should uh, give you a quick remark to how, how about the normal emptiness of this. Module space. Yes, okay, I could obtain the embedding of my, our uh, modular space in the Kruger variety and add. Non-emptiness condition is known in the right-hand side, but unfortunately, let us remember the open condition. This inclusion is strict in general. So a non-emptiness of the right-hand side does not induce the non-emptiness of the right-hand side. We have to, so uh, we have to uh, to find by ourselves. <laughs> but, uh, yes. So uh, we could obtain very good in embedding, but it is not so useful to show the emptiness. But the strategy is very classical, so uh, we follow the standard strategy invented by maybe first by Victor Cut to show the existence of. Um, in the composer representation of the quiver. And also, after that, the Gorazovi gives uh, this type of strategy to show the non emptiness of the regular part of the quiver variety. It's uh, just a taking wild group action. Then we can reduce this alpha to some, somehow, most, so, um, somehow smallest element into. fundamental set of imaginary root if it is imaginary root or uh, if it is real root we can reduce this uh, element to the simple root so uh, by using the very good property of on, on the fundamental set of imaginary root or simple root we can show the in, inside these uh, simple spaces uh, it is rather easier to show the non-emptiness. So uh, we follow this uh, strategy. So we uh, considering the wild group action on our modular space and uh, reduce our, uh, our pro problem into the much easier case, then we sh in, in the easier situation we show the non-emptiness, then we recover by using the wild group action on the whole uh, space of the modular space no emptiness of the modular space, then we obtain the main cell and we state in the beginning of this seminar. So uh, maybe I already over my time, so I step here. So thank you very much for your attention.